This week, we're going to look at how to use pandas to merge two data frames to put locations on mesonet sites and then grid that data. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week I want to look at a pretty common problem, which is that your data from some surface stations are in one file, such as these mesonet data files, but the locations of those stations and other metadata are in another file, maybe a CSV file or a shape file. So we need to take those two data sets and merge them, and then we need to take that data, which is irregularly spaced, and grid it so we can do calculations on it, which we'll do next week. So let's take a look at how we can do this with the Oklahoma Mesonet. All right, so to start us off with, I've got two paths here that I just copied from the browser window. One is the data, which is a 2011 November 2nd data file. And then the locations file, which was in the last page that I was on. And that's a CSV. So now we need to do some imports. We know we're going to work with pandas. I'm going to import pandas as pd. This is our standard convention. I'm going to import metpy.calc as mpcalc. Import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. From metpy.units, I'm going to import the units registry. And from metpy.interpolate, I'm going to go ahead and use interpolate to grid. Oh, there we go. We had tab complete help us out there. All right. So now we've got our imports. The first thing I want to do is read my data. I'm going to create a data frame, use pandas read CSV. We've gone over reading mesonet data files before. Luckily, it's relatively simple. We can just pass the URL directly into read CSV. It will go get that for us. There are two header rows that we need to skip. And we want to use white space delimiters. So now if we look at the head of our data frame, there we go. We've got a station ID and a lot of data with that station. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop some of these columns because I know that I actually, for a calculation that we're going to do next week, only need air temperature, pressure, wind speed, wind direction, are really the UNV components of wind. So there are a number of ways we could do that. The way I'm going to do it today is just by passing what I want to keep. So station ID, T air, wind speed, wind direction, pressure. And now if I look at the head of my data frame, it's a much more compact data frame. Now let's go ahead and read in our DF for locations. I'm going to use read CSV again. And this time it is location F name. And let's try that and see if we get what we want. And as it turns out, since this was a CSV file, it reads in quite nicely. But we again don't need all of these columns of information. In fact, we can trim it down quite a bit. We just need the station ID so that we can merge these data frames, the latitude, and the longitude of the station to allow us to grid. I like trimming up my data frames where I can, just because not only does it keep the in-memory volume smaller, though here that's not really much of a concern, but it just makes them easier to work with, easier to inspect visually, and there are less missing values and other things that could get into my calculations. So now that we have these two data frames, we need to merge them together based on the station ID. 
into one data frame so that the station data is associated with a latitude and longitude for gridding. We're going to call that df merged. We're going to use the pandas merge function. Data frame, our data frame location. The left on is the column in the left data frame, which is capital STID. The right on is lowercase std for our location data frame. And if we look at df merged, all right, we see that it did indeed match up the station IDs. Now we don't need that redundant station ID. So if we wanted, we could drop, and if we look at the help for that, we tell it what labels we want to drop and an axis potentially. So zero is index, one is columns. So I want to drop STID, axis equals one, and let's do that in place. And now we have that redundant column gone. All right, so we can make a quick plot not any kind of map projection or scaling, but just as a sanity check to make sure that things are working as we expect. So I'm going to plot longitude, latitude, and I'm going to color the points by air temperature. All right, we can see we've got colder air out here and something that looks kind of like the Panhandle Estate. Warmer air down here in the southeast, so I would say we've got a front somewhere along here, which makes sense. So now, how can we grid these values? Well, we can use MetPy's interpolate to grid, which we look at the help for. We see it takes an X, Y, and a Z, or that we want to interpolate. We need to specify some things like how many neighbors we want, or the type of interpolation what kind of search radius and horizontal resolution we would like. And if we keep going down through the doc string here, we see that we get a grid X, grid Y, and the two-dimensional grid back. All right, there are a number of ways that we could do this, but I'm going to do probably the, the simplest way, which is just use interpolate to grid several times. We could put this in a loop, we could have that stuff things into a dictionary, uh, but for my testing right now, this is how I'm going to do it. Grid X, grid Y, grid temperature. And first we have to give it an X. So we've got our DF merged longitude, latitude, and our air temperature. And we need to call that values on those just so we drop some of that pandas data series structure back just to a plain old array. For the interpolation type, we're gonna make this a Cressman interpolation with a minimum neighbors of one, a search radius of half a degree, which is going to be very large for this, and a horizontal resolution of 0.1 degree. Okay, now if we do another quick sanity check here of our grid X, grid Y, color is a grid temperature, we see a nice dense grid that's interpolated definitely what looks like a cold front crossing the state. So we just need to take this, and here's where we could probably be a little more elegant by putting it in a loop. And we're going to grid pressure. We need U and V components of wind, but we have not yet calculated those, so we need to add a cell up above and do that. 
there's our pressure and we'll call these u and v okay so let's put a cell up here df merged u and df merged v we're going to use metpycalc's wind components function which looking at the docs takes a speed and a direction so we're going to provide it if you remember we kept wind speed wind direction we're going to drop the data structure and then append units Though we don't really care about the units here we do need the units for the calculation to work and we'll add units.degrees on here and now we do our interpolation and if we wanted we could do grid u just to see what the u components of the wind look like and we see there's a pretty clear shift along what looks like the front or just ahead of it so we think that our interpolation has worked well now we have interpolated data to a grid that we can run calculations on and that's what we'll do next week i hope that you found this useful i'll see you on next week's MetPy monday